Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Time to do drawing paper, pen, uh, combine them. Really exciting, a video sponsored by Factor. Let me put this on. Today is, this should help complete the look. Right? I think I'll pop that back. Today's new, new sword day, all right? Check it out. What do you guys think? Oh yeah. I turned off the ceiling fan for this one. Yeah. I like it. This is this is my first uh what they call a, a battle ready sword. It's uh it's pretty sharp. Can you hear this? Probably not. But it's not it's not just one of those that you can, uh, you know, if you hit something with it, it's gonna fall apart. I'm pretty sure you can, I could do one of those backyard videos for, you know, like slicing through water jugs and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm ready for that right now. I'm still just enjoying kind of holding it, trying not to hit stuff in my room. It just, you know, it just feels good. I'm just, I'm enjoying this level of it. Got the buck knife on the other hip, you know, in case I get disarmed. So, I don't know, life is good on the the belt, the belt department. Each hip, we're, we're good here. I like it. Ha! On guard. On guard much? Yeah, a little bit. All right, but you know what they say, the pen is mightier, so we should, we should. Come back, chair. Come back, I do need you. Now let's draw. In this video, I'm using a nice Namiki fountain pen that I did an art trade for not too long ago, and it's been treating me well. In other news, I recently read this, well, listened, audiobook, mode, uh, a dual biography of Winston Churchill and Mohandas Gandhi. I didn't really know that Mahatma wasn't his first name. It's just like a title given to him when he's like 50 years old. Uh, like it means like wise man or something like that. Anyways, the whole time I'm reading this biography, I think the one thing almost everyone knows about Gandhi, uh, maybe that he's Indian, I guess, but he's like one of the most quoted people ever when he said that thing about be the change you wish to see in the world, right? And so as the book went on and on and on, it was a pretty long one. It's like a 36 hour audio book. I made it slightly quicker by listening to it at 1.1 X speed. But the whole time it went, as I got farther and farther in the book, I was like, okay, any minute now, they're gonna, you know, he's gonna say this line. Like, say the line, Gandhi, say the line. And they, he said a lot of stuff in the book. I mean, he didn't actually say it, but they, you know, they told about lots of conversations he had, lots of things he said. There were even, like, quotes at the beginning of each chapter. Uh, but by the end of the book, that quote was never, ever mentioned. And maybe this was intentional on the part of the biographers, right? Like, hey, everyone already knows this quote. There's no point in rehashing it. Maybe it was just something like off the cuff that Gandhi said once and it didn't really have much effect or import on his life anyways. So I don't know. Like, maybe I'm, I'm sure the biographer had heard of that quote before and had and made a conscious decision not to include it but still it was in the back of my mind the whole time i'm listening to this story 
like maybe this will be the chapter. Maybe this is the, each situation that cropped up every time they're like, and then he gave a speech. And sometimes that would even be like, and then he gave, he said something that everyone remembered. And then it would be some other quote that I don't remember because I was just waiting for him to say, be the change you wish to see in the world or something. Right. Anyways, all that aside, it was a pretty good, pretty good, um, book. Uh, don't remember what it was called. Let me see. I'll look it up on my phone really quick. I don't know if I'd recommend it. I mean, maybe, I mean, I would recommend it just on the, just on the grounds that it was well written and interesting. It was called, oh, it's called Gandhi and Churchill by Arthur Herman. Uh, I just don't know if it's up, up everyone's alley. If you're into uh, biographies of historical figures, yes, definitely read it. Um, basically, I learned things like, you know, they're both, both Gandhi and Churchill were pretty racist, um, but I guess it seems like pretty much everyone, by our standards of racism, it seems like pretty much every single person was at the time, unfortunately. Like, Gandhi started his activism in South Africa because he was upset that the Indian people there were getting treated like black people. So that was kind of weird. And he didn't want that. But he didn't care about the black people. And... And Churchill, he was upset uh, that India wanted independence from Britain, and he saw it as just and right that Britain should uh, rule over India for their own good, of course. And obviously, there was 36 hours of this stuff. Uh, Gandhi had this, this theory of a peaceful resistance called Satyagraha, where you, it's like a political style of resistance where you never do any violence or anything, but it caused a lot of controversy be, because, you know, he he had lots of controversial ideas that ended up in lots of riots anyways. So his, the things he did, even though he espoused peacefulness, um, lots of riots continually broke out and so then he kept on having to do things like, uh, he, he was such a famous person. He would do things like say he's going on a fast. He's like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm fasting. I'm not going to eat until you guys stop fighting and rioting. And so then people would eventually stop fighting and rioting, uh, because it looked like he was about to die and no one wanted him to die. Or sometimes there was like political people like the viceroys, which were the people that Britain put in charge of India, uh, they wouldn't do something that Gandhi wanted. So Gandhi would once again threaten to starve himself to death. Uh, and the viceroys would succumb to what Gandhi wanted just because they knew that if Gandhi did starve himself to death, there would be much more violence. Uh, because then it would look like it was the viceroy's fault for killing Gandhi. And st anyways, it was all just kind of weird and uh, manipulative. But I guess it was, I don't know. It was very, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> All right, lunchtime. Factor meals make it easy and quick to fill up and refuel on the go when you've got a lot of drawing to do like I do because these meals are ready to go in just two minutes. Plus, these meals help eliminate grocery shopping, meal prep, and cleaning. Right now, I've got some pesto salmon here, one of my favorite meals from them. And once you sign up, you can get uh, really flexible meal plans, anywhere from 4 to 18 meals per week. Mm. Plus, you can add all these different side options, like veggies and all these different smoothies. Got a mango here. It's pretty good stuff. So head to go.factor75.com slash draws60 and use code draws60 to get 60% off your first factor box. That's right, 60% off with code draw 60 at go.factor75.com slash draw 60. It's all on the screen. Go click it in the description, all right? Mm. Oh, and also another book I read recently, this was a few months ago, so I wish I remembered it better, was called King Leopold's Ghost. This one I would definitely recommend. It's much, actually much better than the Gandhi and Churchill book, just because... Uh, there was just so much more stuff I hadn't known, and it somehow seemed less dry in the way the information was presented. Basically, this is about King Leopold II, 
of Belgium. Basically, King Leopold I of Belgium was the first king of Belgium. Uh, Belgium, like, you know, it's like some nation that, like, popped up out of nowhere. And then they're like, hey, we need a king. So they got a king. It was some prince, and they made him a king. And then King Leopold II was his son. And he's like, okay, I'm this king of this little European nation. And he looked around at all these other European nations, and he saw that they all had uh, colonies. And he got really jealous. And he realized he couldn't get his own colony, mostly because, not easily at least, mostly because all the colonies were mostly like snatched up already. And because if he did, um, all the other bigger more well-established nations, you know, like England, France, Germany, Portugal, Netherlands, stuff like this, they would all take it kind of as a threat. Or if he tried to grab something as a colony, they would all just do it first. Like if it was something that could be gotten, they would get it. So then he had his eye on the center of Africa, which wasn't well explored yet. But he's like, yes, I think there's something here. At this point, people had just been kind of sailing ships around the outside of Africa. And the, the center of Africa was just kind of a big question mark. Um, there was a, I mean, and so he started like paying people to like go explore it and look in, you know, like make expeditions through there. Uh, and, you know, this is when th throughout this whole process, this is when famous books like um, the, Heart of, the Heart of Darkness were written. Uh, who, these are like famous explorers that went in there. And uh, so there's all these, all these Africans living in there, you know, just living their best lives, doing what they wanted. And this King Leopold II, he went about it kind of a sneaky way because he's just like, yeah, I'm just making, I'm, it's not a, he's like, he made it very clear. It's not a colony. Uh, I'm just kind of making it a, a, a trade area. For everyone, right? He's, you know, whenever anyone asked him about it, he's like, yeah, it's just like, let's just go in there. Let's just, you know, get some ivory, uh, you know, maybe harvest some rubber from the rubber vines, uh, you know, but it was very far away from Europe and any kind of supervisory eyes of anyone who really cared. And it, in this book, it details how, um, you know, there was some like warehouse clerk in Belgium who realized uh, all of this, he realized that there was forced labor, there was slavery and quite a lot of it going on in the Congo because all these goods, great quantities of goods were coming into these warehouses and nothing was going out to pay for them and no one else was really paying attention. And he, he concluded, he's like, the only other, the only conclusion I can come to is that there's forced labor going on. And, you know, so he kind of blew the whole thing up. He went to, you know, the press and all these things. And it, there was just, you know, this whole big, long, multi-decade falling out of multiple nations. And it, it, somehow King Leopold had had the Congo in his name personally. And so he became this huge, wealthy person instead of it being uh, part of Belgium and but then he he kept Belgium from getting too angry because he's like, I'll, I'll I'll put it in my will for Belgium to get get the Congo after I die. And so they're like, oh okay, fine, we won't we won't make too much of a stink about it or something like this. So anyways, very, oh that 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 book was very interesting. Just and it went into all the like there's all these first first hand accounts. There's fun, some first hand accounts. There's not very many of them of like actual like natives because there were like some some missionaries that went over there like even like baptist missionaries from the from america that would go over there and learn to speak the language and wrote down what some natives said and stuff like that uh i don't know it's just just crazy stuff it's like these whole huge sagas of people's experience and things that happened for for hundreds of years and it's like sometimes you, you know like you don't even know and i don't know it's just i don't know it's like eye-opening and I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. This video is a video of me drawing lines on paper and uh, well, yeah.
Yeah, that's about it, really. Yeah. Okay, bye. Have a good day. <laughs>